Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Thompson. This is COVID-19 Update, April 6, 2020. Sorry, I've been away for a couple of days for a little bit of rest and relaxation, but I'm back now in full force. I'll probably do these every other day unless there's some new exciting data, um, just uh, as there's just not as much information to present. All data is of 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to account for all reporting. All videos can be found on roominfo.com slash blog. Here are the current trajectories. United States is now over 350,000 cases in total. Italy and Spain are definitely flattening. If you zoom in on Canada, the question here is Canada slowing. Stay tuned. We're going to look in a minute. Here's the reported cases per million population. Canada is ducked under Germany and is now ducking under France. Again, is Canada flattening? Stay tuned. Here are the percentage of deaths. Italy is the highest at 12.47%. Germany is low at 1.75%. Canada at 1.94%. Here are the actual numbers of deaths each day. The top number is the number of deaths the last day, and the bottom number are the uh, days before this. Take home points, Italy and Spain are definitely slowing. United States is almost now at 3%, and Canada is almost at 2%. So what that means is every 100 people who are diagnosed with COVID, about two, unfortunately, will die in Canada. Here are the estimated reproduction numbers. Take home points here. Italy, Germany, and Spain all have reproduction numbers less than one. That means they're still getting new cases, but they're getting fewer and fewer new cases each day. United Kingdom. United States, France, and Canada all have reproduction numbers greater than one. That means they're getting more new cases each day, okay, on average over the last seven days. So another way to look at that is this is, this is our new cases per day. Italy, Germany, and Spain have crested over the top now, whereas Canada, United States, United Kingdom, and France are, are still growing and hopefully approaching the apex. Certainly, I think Canada's definitely approaching the apex. Here are new cases per day, and you'll see Italy is flattening, as you'd expect from the reproduction numbers. Similar story in Spain, similar story in Germany. Here's France. Uh, the erratic uh, reporting has led to this uh, erratic graph here. They're still growing a little bit. Okay. United Kingdom, again, still growing. United States and Canada. Here are the daily deaths. There's Italy. Again, they have crested over. Spain. Germany, France, still growing, United Kingdom, United States, and Canada. Here are the new cases per day in Canada, and you'll see that we had 1,242 cases today, which is less than yesterday and less than the day before. So this is very good news. Here are our numbers versus South Korea and the United Kingdom. Here's Canada. You'll see South Korea here, so we're still way ahead of South Korea. But if you compare us now to the United Kingdom, we've actually started to drop off and not follow their trajectory, which is great news. Here are the provincial cases of COVID-19. I'll start with the big four provinces, which have the most number of cases. Canada in total, we have over 16,000 cases. Here's Alberta. British Columbia has actually started to flatten. Ontario and Quebec. Quebec is now over 8,000 cases. Ontario, over 4,000 cases. Here are the provincial uh, cases in the other provinces. A province with over 200 total cases include Manitoba, Newfoundland, Saskatchewan, and Nova Scotia. Here are the cumul cumulative deaths in the four big provinces. Here's Canada in total, with over 300 deaths. Here's Alberta, British Columbia, Ontario, and Quebec, who saw a jump in the number of deaths over the last few days and now approaching Ontario. I'm now going to show you six different graphs from John Byrne Murdoch at the Financial Times. The first three graphs are going to be the total number of cases or deaths. The second three graphs are going to be the average daily number of cases or deaths. Here is the first graph, and this is the total number of cases in the region, in the uh, countries. The y-axis now has 500,000, okay, because the United States has over 350,000 cases. Canada here is starting to flatten, and India is still bumping along and slowly growing. This is the total number of deaths. Take home points, the United States has now passed Italy at the same point in time for the uh, number of deaths. The United States will likely have the highest death toll globally by later this week. Canada hopefully has started to flatten. And here are the sub-national regions. And take home point here is New York is almost 5,000 deaths. 
Now here are the average daily confirmed cases. Okay, this is a seven day rolling average. United States has anywhere between 25 and 30,000 new cases every day. Okay, and this is because of simultaneous outbreaks in many states. This is the price of no national lockdown. France, Germany, Italy, and Spain are seeing new cases plateau or begin to dip as we've seen throughout this presentation. Japan's delayed outbreak is starting to accelerate. Here are the average number of deaths per day on a seven day rolling average. United States has about 1,000 deaths every day over the last week. The deaths in Italy and Spain peaked around days 23 to 24. And United Kingdom might peak in another seven to 10 days. And here's Canada down here. Here are the subnational regions. Okay, for the number of deaths on a daily basis. Okay? New York has averaged 500 deaths per day, which is 50% of the entire US deaths per day. London, England continues to rise. And as you've heard, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, is now in the intensive care unit, and we wish him all the best. So the big question, how long is it gonna take us to come down from the peak? Well, using data from China, it seems to take about twice as long to come down from the peak as it does to go up. So if it takes about 30 days to get to the peak, it might take another 60 days or so to come down. Now that's really going to depend on how bumpy the ride is on the way down, because we've seen in other areas where things have flared up a little bit, and the best example right now is Japan. Now watching how China navigates this suppression phase may offer guidance to Canada and the rest of the world. And it's all going to depend on how rapidly we ease social distancing, how well we quarantine any new cases and do contact tracing, and how what we do with travelers who are new, or new entering the country, and do we quarantine them or not? Because China's certainly seen that and now has a 14-day quarantine on new travelers entering the country. So remember, folks, it's more important now than ever to hold the line. Don't let that virus escape. I know those new OHL draft picks over the last weekend really know how to hold the line, and I hope all Canadians do too. Remember, we have to stay strong. You can support by going to collinsclosures.com, going under Canada Strong, and buying one of these awesome hoodies or t-shirts to small, support small businesses or frontline workers. Remember, folks, do your part to flatten the curve. Stay home, stay safe, and please, please save lives.